Hey, what's up? This is Arcteryx here. But what is it that makes Arcteryx worth it? I've probably got more from this brand than any other, so it definitely does fit what I want from clothing, both aesthetically and performance-wise. And you would have seen it turn up in a bunch of more urban techwear-focused outfits, as well as my more recent ventures into the great outdoors. And part of that is some sweet new SS21 straight from Arcteryx themselves, so thank you very much to them for that. And we are going to focus on a couple of those key pieces, namely the Atom A. AR hoodie, the Beta LT jacket, and the Atom SL anorak. What makes those pieces stand out and what are some of the key features that make them useful? We'll also take a look at some of those more hidden Arcteryx features, those little details that a casual observer might not notice, but will really provide value in some way and really show the attention to detail from this brand that end up with you getting pretty decent stuff no matter what item you go for. If you're on the fence about getting involved with this brand, either from an aesthetic or a performance perspective, hopefully this video will provide some useful bits of info. Arcteryx, of course, is a relatively premium brand, but I actually think it's easier to justify the prices of this compared to many others out there. So with that said, let's go on our little Arcteryx adventure. When many people think Arcteryx, they think of the shell jackets. The Beta LT is a particularly good example of that, and I think really exemplifies what the brand is all about and what's driving its popularity. You will have seen this probably used fairly heavily in a fashion context, with frequent collabs and stuff like that, but also used when performance is required as well. Firstly, the Beta LT's clean, technical aesthetic really lends itself to being worn in that outdoor gear style that's proving popular at the moment, but it does so with no real extreme details or things going on that don't need to be there. It also doesn't have much of a retro look, particularly in black or in some of the more subdued or monochromatic colours that we've seen the Beta LT come in over the years. That part is pretty important, we'll come back to it later. Focusing on that material and the performance side of things is a super easy initial way to help justify some of that cost. Three layer Gore-Tex construction which will give you up to 28k millimetres of water resistance which is a extremely high standard, taped seams throughout, water Waterproof zips, which don't need material flaps covering them, means, yeah, water performance is really second to none, and it does that whilst retaining breathability that you won't find in a cheap waterproof product. At the same time, the LT in Beta LT means light, so yeah, that Gore-Tex fabric is very protective, it looks very substantial, and it has that kind of structure to it that Gore-Tex material does, but at the same time, it's really not going to weigh you down, making this a very easy garment to wear. And that applies to the whole feature set of the Beta LT as well. You've got hand pockets that are nice and surprisingly roomy. You've got these big pit zips, which are super effective for dumping heat and again, constructed in such a way that they're very easy to undo and do up. The hood as well, the clearest direct reference to Arcteryx's climbing roots, is really quite substantial and it's big enough, in fact, to get a helmet on underneath it. But at the same time, this can be cinched down really effectively to the point that it is far more form-fitting, but at the same time will articulate itself very well with the wearer. And that's one of those things that is equally appropriate if you're out there on the trails, you're looking around at those beautiful vistas or whatever, or if you're in the city and you're looking back and forth for traffic. In fact, that ease of movement is woven into the whole jacket's construction, with great articulation of the arms, making it easy to move around in, and a slight slightly generous cut designed for layering without it looking bulky and oversized. So overall it strikes a great balance between being lightweight and easy to put on enough that you can chuck it on for a quick rainy trip down to the shops, but equally right down to that material level is going to give you good enough performance for those real uh, far more demanding trips. But that versatility extends past performance and into how this stuff looks. I mentioned before that modern aesthetic that Arcteryx has, and that's particularly important in this context. Of course, Arcteryx is a brand designed for the trails, for climbing, outdoor naturey stuff in general that is absolutely woven right into the core of this gear. But we're talking techwear, of course, on this channel and urban utility kind of stuff, and I still think that Arcteryx is very appropriate in that kind of context and worn with that kind of style too, particularly when you are looking at these monochromatic or more subdued colours. For me, it's the structure of Gore-Tex, the overall cut of this jacket and the lack of extraneous features on the front that really do that and make the jacket feel a lot more intentional than it happened to be raining
training, so I just chucked on whatever I had access to. And that level of a kind of prepared look is definitely important in this style. Those zips we mentioned earlier as well, the waterproof construction, which means that you don't need to have any kind of material flaps or anything protecting those pockets, mean that the design can be a lot cleaner than what you might typically associate with outdoor performance stuff. So that high level of performance directly contributes to the aesthetic of Arc'teryx gear. There's definitely value in that. Personally, I find myself wearing the same kinds of things in both urban and rural locations. I might be going out, you know, grabbing some food in town or something, and then going for a walk in the countryside immediately after. So things which look equally appropriate in both of those scenarios are really valuable. That's partly why I found myself wearing things like the J1A GTKP quite a lot, because it combines that undoubtable technical design, but with a, a slightly more interesting, more vibrant colour scheme than the typical blacked out super urban acronym gear. In the case of Arc'teryx jackets, the sleek nature of the design, combined with that obviously performance centric look, means that inherently they do look appropriate for both of those scenarios. But because it is a relatively clean design, it's kind of lacking in features at the front too much, it means you can easily add things to push that in the more urban technical direction if you want to, whilst keeping that thing on as an outer layer that's just totally uncompromising. You're going to end up with an outfit that looks as good as buying a fashion-only product, but is going to perform much better and going to give you a much better wearing experience. Anyway, the point that I'm making is something like the Beta LT, both aesthetically and performance-wise, can check a lot of boxes. So if you're a fan of that cost-per-wear metric, you might find something like this coming out surprisingly well, because it is just very easy to find an excuse to wear it. This is particularly when you consider Arc'teryx's high quality construction and their very generous warranty, which means that this stuff is likely to keep going for a very long time. You might be thinking though, the Beta LT comes in at $399. There are actually far more expensive Arc'teryx jackets available, like the Alpha SV, at $799. You might think then, am I getting a cut down Arc'teryx jacket, a cut down feature set, cut down performance, by buying a comparatively cheap jacket. I would say no to that, and in fact for a lot of people, the Beta LT is actually going to be a better and more appropriate jacket than some of that more expensive stuff. The Alpha series is intended for pretty serious climbing, and you'll notice things like no hand pockets, they're a bit higher up on the chest, so that they wouldn't impede the use of a harness that would be strapped around you. That's great, of course, if you are a hardcore climber and you're likely to be wearing a harness, but for your average walker, that's actually not going to be what you want. Similarly, their AR or SV shells, designed for all-around or severe weather respectively, tend to use Gore-Tex Pro Most Rugged, as opposed to the standard three-layer stuff you'll find on the Beta LT. This is more abrasion resistant, so if you're bashing up against rocks and things like that, it's going to last against that punishment a lot better. But it's a bit stiffer, a bit crunchier, and it's not as breathable as the regular stuff either. So again, that stuff is going to be great for serious climbers, but but for someone like me that's wearing it primarily urban conditions, light hikes, stuff like that, actually, the regular three-layer Gore-Tex is going to be more appropriate. And that's great, because it's cheaper. So absolutely don't think the more expensive the Arc'teryx jacket, the better the level of performance. They're simply designed for different uses, and those different uses have different levels of requirements. You're not really missing out on looks either, as we'll focus on next. The Arc'teryx visual design language is extremely consistent, meaning that choosing which individual jacket or item to buy, from an aesthetic perspective at least, is far Far less of an issue. You're going to get a pretty consistent looking product. Shell jackets tend to take a lot of the glory because they have the most visibility, but the mid-layer stuff, those are really the unsung heroes, and for a lot of people you might find you'll get the most use out of these instead. They also do a great job of showing Arc'teryx's considered and reiterated design, and it's stuff that isn't always visible or isn't always obvious by just looking at product pages on the website. The Atom range is a great example of that. I've worn the Atom LT absolutely loads. That was my first Arc'teryx pickup back in 2017, 2018, I think. So it's great now to have the Atom AR hoodie, which is a much more heavily insulated and hooded version of that. 
These work great underneath shells like the beta because those aren't warm by themselves, meaning these are really allowing you to expand the situations you can wear that stuff in. It fits a little bit trimmer as well, which again makes it perfect as a layering piece, and that's true aesthetically as well. If you're undoing one or both of these layers, it gives you that real kind of prepared look, and it just adds that little bit of extra interesting detail that you might not have otherwise. Even though this is cheaper than the shell jackets, you're definitely not getting shortchanged on looks. This still looks very much like a proper jacket. And even though I spend a lot of the time wearing something like the Atom AR, as I have the Atom LT for many years, underneath other jackets for the purposes of warmth, they can still look great alone as an outer layer. And that's particularly if you are using those darker or more monochrome colors. And I think even worn in kind of urban scenarios, the idea of a mid-layer jacket is maybe much more associated with hiking than anything else. But as you might see in some of these older pictures of the uh, Atom LT, it still looks great worn as a piece of urban tech wear. I would definitely recommend the Atom line if you're interested in Arc'teryx as a brand for all of those reasons. They're cheaper than the shell jackets, they still have that same great visual identity, they can be worn both as a mid layer and an outer layer so there's loads of potential opportunities to wear them, there's just so much to like about them. Small details which show Arc'teryx's considered approach to design are rife among the entire lineup, and the Atom line is no exception to that, even though they aren't as expensive or not as flashy as the shell jackets. Look at the Zip Track, for example. This is really, really smooth, which is designed specifically so that it's easy to undo with one hand while you're doing something else. But at the same time, they've added these little invisible speed bumps to this Zip Track around the top, which means that when you're doing this up, it gives some natural resting points where that zip can stop, and it means that the jacket isn't going to pull itself open. It will naturally stop at those little points of resistance. In the new Atom LT, they've upgraded the core loft insulation to a new compact version, meaning that even after you've washed it a bunch of times, you've stuffed it into a bag loads, etc., it's going to retain its warmth better than the previous versions. And in down jackets like the Cerium, they still use synthetic insulation at points which are most likely to be vulnerable to moisture, like at the hem, under the arms, etc. And that's done so because synthetic insulation does a much better job of staying warm when it gets wet. I could talk about gloves, hats, pants, base layers, which I've picked up over the years, which as you can probably see from the footage, collectively builds into a kind of ecosystem which sees all of these individual things work super nicely together and aesthetically fit very well too. But in the interest of brevity, we're gonna look at one or more jacket and it's another new one from SS21. This is the Atom SL Anorak. And it's a little bit of a wild card and it feels a little bit different to the other Atoms. The SL designation means super light and indeed this is far more lightly insulated than the other Atoms. This with only 20 dernier insulation in the body compared to 60 in the body of the Atom LT and all the way up to 120 in the Atom AR. And as a result, this is an extremely lightweight piece as well. When you put this on, it really does feel like you're wearing nothing at all. This actually makes it a great outer layer when it's not too warm out. It's super pliable, it feels really easy to wear and easy to move around and far more than a Gore-Tex shell. But guess what? It still has the same aesthetic as all the other Arc'teryx stuff, so you can still look just as technical in all conditions. But because this is, of course, an Atom, it still makes a great mid-layer piece. So it being very lightly insulated, of course, makes it very suitable for warmer, for spring conditions, for example. This is DWR treated, but it has nothing like the water resistance of a proper shell. So yeah, chuck on a Beta LT over the top of this, you're not going to get too hot, but if it does pour down with rain, you're still going to have that great level of protection. The hood is quite snug, which makes sense because if you're wearing this as an outer layer, you're probably not going to need warmth around your head. It's going to be pretty warm already. That also means that the hood can actually roll up and tuck away quite nicely. So if you're wearing this as a mid layer, you don't have to bother putting that hood inside the other hood because it's not insulated. It's not going to be offering you anything extra. That's a great example of Arc'teryx not just making the Atom SL a lighter version of the LT, but actually thinking thinking about in what situation would you use this and how can we make it better or how can we kind of reimagine that compared to the other stuff. 
Another key difference is this can pack away into its surprisingly roomy chest pocket, so you've got an extra level of functionality with the SL in particular. It makes it perfect for traveling, stow it away in a bag or something, you can get it out just when you need it, it's got that real emergency jacket appeal, and yet when it's on, looks a lot more substantial and looks a lot better, frankly, than your average packable jacket. The anorak styling is quite unusual for me, but this gives it an even cleaner look without having the full zip there. It also makes sense in that because this is so lightly insulated, you're less likely to need to fully unzip this to try and dump heat, because it's not going to retain as much. Some people like that slightly more retro styling of the anorak though, so if you are a fan, this is definitely going to appeal. But as I said, this is an extremely comfortable thing to wear, it feels very manoeuvrable. As with the other Arc'teryx pieces, I find that it's very easy to style this in a whole variety of ways. I would say that this outfit here is a pretty unconventional way of wearing this kind of anorak, but just works super easily. It really does just fit into this overtly technical outfit, just as it would your average kind of day out hiking type thing. There are of course more things we could talk about with each individual item, so I definitely recommend if there's something in particular that catches your eye, have a look at some video reviews because there's all kinds of outdoor gear fans who uh, talk a lot about their individual use cases, the things that make particular Arc'teryx jackets right for them, and all of those resources are super valuable. But hopefully that gave you a good idea of some of the best bits about this brand, certainly why I like them so much, why I've ended up assembling the collection that I have, as well as why they're worth considering if you're interested in this outdoor gear style which is absolutely growing in popularity, and how, yeah, you go for Arc'teryx stuff, you're going to end up with pretty good gear at the end of the day. And if you're an outdoor fan that's looking for performance gear, why Arc'teryx might just fit the bill. So let me know of the three things that we really focused on here, the Beta LT, the Atom AR hoodie, and the Atom SL Anorak. Was there one that stuck out to you there? Or um, maybe you've already got one of these or indeed something else in the Arc'teryx lineup. If so, definitely um, share your thoughts down there in the comments because that's gonna be super helpful for other people approaching this brand and uh, wanting to get some ideas of what kinds of things might be best for them. Because the Arc'teryx product catalog is pretty extensive by this point and there's loads of different options for lots of different use cases. If you enjoyed the video though, you like this kind of brand overview format, which is not really something that I've done too much before, then uh, definitely give it a like because that is super appreciated and uh, yeah, if it does well, then maybe I'll do more of this kind of thing. And uh, yeah, again, thank you so much for watching this video. We will be back next week with another one. Shout out to Billy Simpson, had no idea about the New Balance and Snow Peak shoes. I don't think they really promoted them that much to be honest, but yeah, definitely something that could appeal to techwear fans, which is exactly why I wanted to cover them. And shout out to Biolucker who asked about barefoot shoes. I mean, Balenciaga did the barefoot shoe collab, so I guess that means they're cool now. But in a weird kind of way, they are designed with performance in mind, and they kind of have a weird, unconventional technical look. So, I mean, if someone wants to give that a go, be my guest, let me know how it works for you. Thanks for making it all the way to the end of the video. If you want to catch some more, there's going to be links going up at the top. And if you haven't subscribed yet, but you want to see cool videos about all your favorite brands like Arc'teryx, then uh, you should definitely consider subscribing because we've got more stuff like that coming up every single week.